Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Code This UI. I got a video request on how to create a shrinking header on scroll. You've probably seen this effect before that when the page loads you'll have a larger header and then as you scroll down the page the header will remain in a or the nav bar will remain in a fixed position and it will shrink the the height will reduce. So I'm going to show you how to do that and then after that I'm going to show you a similar effect that you've probably seen before where um, for example on Quartz, uh, QZ.com, you'll notice that if I scroll down the, uh, the nav bar is hidden and then if I start scrolling back up the nav bar shows up again as I scroll up and then when I scroll down it disappears again. So I'm going to show you how to create both of these effects. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, I'm going to be using Pug as my HTML templating engine. Uh, it's basically HTML, but it's rather than having opening and closing tags. So for example, if I have a div and then a closing div tag, this uh, and then I have a let's say a link within that would be like this and then closing link tag rather than doing that pug lets me use indentation so I can just write div and then a using indentation so I'm going to be using that alright so let's go ahead and first create our nav bar so I'm going to create a nav element and I'm going to give that a class of main nav. Okay, and in my CSS, I'm going to create a class for main nav. And I want the position to be fixed, the width to be 100%, the height to be, let's say, 100 pixels and the border bottom to be one pixel solid. I'll make that a light gray color. Cool, and then I also want to remove the um, padding on the page. So I'm going to do a couple things. I'm going to set the box sizing on every element. That's what this wild card is, it selects every element on the page and I want to set the box sizing to border box and then for my HTML and body I want to zero out the margin there and now my navbar stretches to the edge here okay so the next thing I want to do is I want to add a link that will have my um, my logo and it'll also link to the home page here so I'm going to give it this it's not going to go anywhere so I'll just set it to pound and then yeah I'll leave it at that and then inside of my link I want an image and then for the source, I'm just going to go and search for a logo. And seems fine. No, that's a square shape. I need. Let's try this one. Okay, this will work. And this is really large, but that's not going to matter because I'm going to make the image responsive. So, I need to create a, another selector for my image. So, I'm going to say main nav, and then any image, I want the height to be 100% and I want the width to be auto. 
so that it will scale correctly. And then for the uh, source, I want to copy the image address here. Oops. Paste that in here. Cool. So we have our image now. Whoops. What's going on here? Okay. And I want to set some padding on my nav bar. So I'm just going to set padding to say 20 pixels on the left and right and 10 pixels on top and or that's backwards. 20 pixel 10 pixels on top and bottom and 20 pixels on left and right. Okay. So now I need to create some content so that we can scroll our page. So I'm going to create a section and then I want an H1 tag title and then a paragraph with some lorem ipsum text. Oh, and I also need to set a background color to my nav. Yep, and then let's say for the body, let's add some top padding. And we need, let's say, 100 pixels. Let's say. And then our nav. We need to set the top to zero. Okay, there we go. Cool. So now let's create our scrolling effect. We're not quite yet. Um, we need to duplicate this. So for my section, I'm just going to set the width to 600 pixels and the margin to 100 pixels auto so it's centered and then I'm just going to duplicate this a bunch of times so that we have a scrollable area Okay, one more. Okay, so that should be good enough. All right, so now we need to have a second class for when we shrink this. So for main nav, I'm going to create another class called small. And I want to set the height to be, let's say, 40 pixels instead of 100. So if I go up here, and I add small. See it shrinks, and my logo shrinks as well. So we want to dynamically add that class when we scroll. So to do that, we need to create a variable for uh, our nav, and we're going to set that to document dot query selector and we'll say main nav 
and we want to add an event listener to our window. So window dot add event listener, and we'll listen for scroll, and we'll pass that a function. And inside of that function, we want to write a condition. So we'll want to say if window dot page y offset is greater than 100 so 100 pixels then we want nav dot class list to plus equal so plus equal means it will add the this to the existing class and one create a string and then a space because we're going to be chaining different classes so we need a space between them and we want to add small if it doesn't meet that condition then we want to create an else statement and we want the nav.class list to equal main nav Okay, so let's try this out. So if I scroll, say that once I get to 100, it shrinks. And then when I go back up, it grows. But it would be nice to have a transition. So let's go ahead and add a nice shrinking transition to that. So let's say transition all 300 milliseconds and we want ease in out. Cool, let's try this again. See that, now we got a nice smooth transition. So that's how you go ahead and create that effect. Now let me go ahead and show you how to create the effect we have on quartz. And this will require us to be able to know if the user is scrolling up or down. So we had to add some more JavaScript in order to do that. So let's go back here, and I'm going to clear out this, and I'm going to start over here. And I'm going to create a, I'm going to create another variable for position. And I'm going to set it by default to zero. And then I want to say if position is less than window dot page y offset we want to console dot log down otherwise we want to console dot log up and What we need to do is we need to, after that, we need to set the position to equal to the window.pageY offset. So it will update our variable for our position each time that we scroll. So let's open the console here and see if everything is working. See, so if I'm scrolling down, it says down. And if I scroll up, it says up, down, up, down, up. Okay, so that's not too useful, but at least now we know that we can tell if the user is scrolling up or down. So we need to change our CSS a bit. So, what I want to do is, let me see how they have this here. So I'm going to add a class for up. Up, and I'm going to say, I want to transform and I want to 
translate. And then I also want to add the uh, small class to this. So I want to translate y, and I want to translate that negative 40 pixels. So let's see if we add the up class to this. Yeah, see, it's up, it's off the page. Okay. So, if I'm scrolling down, I want to hide this. So, I'm going to say nav dot class list plus equal space up. And then I think I also should add position equals window dot page y offset here as well. And then I want to set the uh, nav dot class list to equal to main nav and small yeah so if I scroll down it's hidden and then if I scroll up see it comes back so that's exactly what we wanted So there you go, um, there's just a simple way using plain JavaScript how to control scroll events on nav bars.